or get to. Okay, start record. Pull the chat back up really quickly so I can keep up with everybody. Okay, welcome to Live with Prima, everyone. My name is Miranda Edney, and I'm your instructor tonight. We're going to be recreating this paper cupcake that I made um, for Carrie's birthday, and it's using the Garden Fable collection, which is, you know, I don't want to say an older collection because it's really not, and it's one of my all-time favorites, if not my all-time favorite. So I started to just use one of the new collections tonight, but I wanted to stay true to what I created originally, so we're going to go ahead and use the Garden Fable. But if we have a lot of extra time, I want to make like a vintage one. Um, and use some of the IOD molds and like the Vintage Emporium paper. So that's just if we have time. Um, but this is what it looks like, and I'll show you all the way around. Um, the only thing that is, um, I guess, a unique item, and it's really not that unique, is the stand. And I got this at Michael's, um, I guess, like a year ago. They had these um, bigger ones. They're like ceramic. So that's the only thing that I have that... You know, you can. I know there's dies where you can make your own stand. You can make them on a cardboard, chipboard. Um, there's different options, but this is a ceramic one. So um, that's the only thing that is not Prima, really, and that you might have trouble getting hold of. So this is what it looks like, and we're going to be using some really um, easy items that everybody probably already has around the house to make this. Okay. So really quickly, let me do the announcements, and then we will hop right into it. Okay. First up, next Tuesday's Ustream is with Frank, and he will be making one of his world-famous mini-albums. You know, like, he is just the king of those. They're so amazing. It's February the 2nd on Tuesday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. He's going to be using the new Memory Hardware Magnetic Closure album and the Vintage Emporium Collection and lots more. So, I mean, nobody does many albums like Frank, and I just bow down to that because he does such an amazing job, and I can't do one. Okay, next we have the new Seaside Art Venture registration is open April 19th and the 20th, 2016. Email Denny for details, and that is at Denny at PrimaMarketingInc.com. And then also, everybody who is on Facebook, join the Live with Prima Facebook group. Every day we're accepting new people on there. Join our creative and friendly group and stay updated on all of the happenings, classes, and meet lots of other amazingly talented people from all over the world. When you go on Facebook, just search Live with Prima group in the little search bar and then click to join and Carrie will approve you or whoever else on there who's adding members. It's really fun. Um, people post the most amazing projects on there. I was just looking on there right before I started on here and there was some, oh I wish I could think of her name because she deserves a, a recognition. Her project was super amazing. Um, it started with an M. I can't remember. Anyway, share your projects on there and you're going to be blown away by all the talent that everybody shares. All the Prima people all over the world Okay, so this project, we are going to use the Garden Fable paper collection, which I have about 15 of these pads. The good thing about this project is for those of us who save our scraps, it's a really, really good way to use up those scraps. I mean, I will save a piece of paper if it's like this big. And I, I do that because I do a lot of cupcakes and faux cakes, and I usually can use those in some way. Thank you so much, Carrie, for putting those. They're not edible pearls. That would be so awesome, though, right? What if this really was? Um, the re main reason I wanted to do this tonight is because I know on the blog the other day they showed the new IOD molds, how you can use those in baking, and like the little cake they did. It was so adorable. So I was like, yeah, we definitely have to do the cupcake on there. Okay, so anyway, stay on task, Miranda. Sorry, y'all. Um, it's the Garden Fable A4 paper pad. I always opt for the A4s. I've said that a million times. I do altered art, so I just tend to gravitate towards these. The item number is 847-333. We're going to be using this paper pad is... I want to keep this in view, but not um, mess it up. So let's put it kind of over here in the corner so you all can see it still. Okay, I'm going to show you the papers we're going to be using out of here. We're going to be using this sheet right here. That's going to be our actual flowers on the top. I liked that it had, you know, different colors and variations in the pattern. It was just really cool. So we're going to use that for the cupcakes or for the actual little flowers on top. We're going to use this sheet right here, which is um, green on the front. And then it has this like black and white newsprint type on the back. 
and let's see here we're gonna be using see I keep like all my scraps because I use them let's see what other ones are we gonna use this poor paper pad has like been dissected seriously <laughs> it's so bad okay this is one of my favorite papers out of the pad the front and the back of it we're gonna be using this one right here this is gonna be the base of our cupcake and I think that's it I think that's just three sheets here. Let me double check. One, two, three. Yeah, I think we're just using three of them. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is start on the base of our cupcake, this part right here. And all you need is just any kind of cup base. What I did is I went to the Dollar Tree and got these little paper cups right here. You can get, you know, like a 20 pack for a dollar, and I've had these in my stash for like forever. Um, another option I found that is the same size are these little, um, oh goodness, like these peat moss pots. That you could use like a red solo cup, you could use anything you have, a styrofoam cup, anything you have in your collection, in your stash that would fit this. Um, and then for the top of our cupcake, we're just going to be using styrofoam balls. And I do not have, you guys, I'm really sorry, I threw away the wrapper, so I can't tell you the exact size that these are, because I know Michaels has them in different sizes. Let me see really quickly. Yeah, I think these are the two inch, or yeah, these are about two inches, okay? So all I'm doing is taking these and I cut them in half, okay? So you can get two cupcakes out of one styrofoam lid, okay? So that's going to be the base of your cupcake. That's it right there. Now, to do the bottom part, obviously this cup is way too tall. So what we're going to do is cut it down. I've got one ready right here. But I wanted to show you how I go about cutting these down. And this is probably the most ghetto way in the world, but it works for me. Um, I have all kinds of weird little quirky things I do. I don't do measurements well, so I just kind of make do with what I have. So what I do is I just get, let me see, what item do I want to use? That one might be too big. Let's use the soft gloss gel. It's too big too. You know, we're just going to use this. What I do is I find an item that is the height I want, and this one is about two inches high. And I'm going to take one of my um, Prima black markers. I love these things. Actually, let me use the other end of it. Okay. Now, this is my way of getting the size I want. I just put my marker right here and rest it on this cup. And then I'm just going to take the next one and spin it around. And it's going to give me a perfect guide to go back in with my scissors and cut. So, you guys probably all know a much better way, but that's how I do it, okay? So, that's what you're left with. It's just a line around your cup. I'm going to take my Tim Holtz scissors because they're pretty heavy duty. And this edge right here is a little thick. And I'm just going to cut down a couple of times. I mean, I love this project because you could really recycle cups. This is a really good project for upcycling and using your scraps and things like that. Okay, so I'm just going to go right here and start cutting, and I just kind of spin my cup as I go, and it might look like I'm kind of pushing it flat when I go around, but it, it goes right back to its shape, so don't worry about that. Just don't squeeze it too hard. So I just go all the way around, kind of squeezing it so I can get a straight edge. And like I said, I'm just making this two inches. This cup is two inches tall. All right, so that is what you're left with. And my edges are already pretty clean. If you have any um, little blemishes or just tiny little uneven marks, you can trim those off. Other than that, mine's perfect. I can't believe I did that so well the first time. Okay, so that's it. So what we're gonna do is glue our little lid on top of there. But first, we're going to do our flowers on top of here because the bottom layer takes some time to dry. I use the um, the new 3D gloss gel which comes in the little squeezable tubes which I love. The item number is 962982. I love how small and convenient these are. Um, I use the gloss gel too which is in this container which I love as well um, and the item number is 961435 so whichever one you prefer this heavy one worked better for me but either one of them will work 
Now I've already pretty much prepped this circle, but I did leave a little edge, I mean the styrofoam ball, but I did leave a little edge off. The first step I'm going to do is I just like to cover the entire ball with the paper because I just want to have a good base to adhere to and I don't want, when I put my flowers on, I don't want any of this styrofoam to show through. I'm a perfectionist. So that's what I'm going to do. Let me grab my flower punch. This is just an, oh, what is the brand? Somebody probably knows. This is a really popular little flower punch. I probably had this for like, oh, I don't know, five years. It was probably the first punch I ever bought. I've had it for a really long time. Okay, let me grab my paper. And actually, I'm just going to use this scrap piece that I have right here. Because like I said, this is perfect for using up those scraps. So I just try to use up all the paper. I try to stay right on the edges so that I am using as much of the paper as I can without wasting. So I'm keeping those really close together so that I don't waste. And if you happen to cut one a little bit um, wonky and you know a little bit over the edge, it's okay because you're going to have um, the first layer and then you're going to have also a bottom flower, the top part these are both two flowers each so you have plenty of opportunity to cover up your mistake so I just go around and cut out all of my flowers and I also want to do one with the um, Prima dies I was eyeing them earlier and like I said I was going to do this vintage one um, and kind of change it up but I ended up sticking with the original one but I have a really big idea for using the Prima dies and making a bigger one Okay, so once I go all the way around, I usually just cut as close to that as I can and cut that off of there. And then I can probably get a few more out of that. So I don't know how, it's hard for me to tell you how many you're going to need. I know you'll need at least, if you're going by 12 by 12 paper, you'll need at least one full 12 by 12 sheet of paper for a, a one cupcake, so at least one. I think I dipped into another one the first time I did it. Um, so you'll need a, at least one 12 by 12, maybe one and a half for a paper cupcake. And then the other half you could use, you know, for your bottom portion and use the back side. Okay, I'm gonna use two of the chalk edgers here. I used both just for a variation in color. I used the hydrangea one and the old rose one, which this one is brand new and it is super, super saturated, so I have to be really careful with it. So all I do for the first thing, first step is just take my little flower pieces, and this is what they look like. Let me go ahead and show you. I love how the pattern paper really looks really cool on there. Um, for lack of a better word, it just looks cool. It looks cool like that. I really, really like that. Okay, so I just take my chalk edger, and you could go in there and like really ink your edges really nicely, um, or you could not ink them at all. Like you could totally skip this step. Um, I just feel like it kind of pulls it together. But what I do is I just take it and I just kind of like roll my flower on there, like two spins, and it's covered with ink. So that's my quick way of doing it. I'm just kind of taking it and rolling it on there, just like that. So I did some with the old rose, and then the other ones I did with the hydrangea, just for a nice variation in color. Um, and this is a very subtle effect. Like I said, you don't have to ink the edges at all. You really don't. Yeah, there are, I mean, any flower punch that you have, you could do this with y'all. You really could. Um, this is the one I've always used for some reason. Um, I do like the smaller size, but I am about to make a ginormous cupcake with the Prima um, dies, and I think it's going to come out really cool. So any flower punch you have, because you're, I would definitely say you need a punch or a die, because if you're going to try to hand cut this many little flowers, it's going to be so um, time consuming, but it's definitely possible. When I first started out crafting, I didn't have a die cutting machine or punches until like two years into it. So I used to just trace things and cut them out. I had to do it the hard way. Okay, I've done all these with this color. Let me switch up to the other one really quickly. This one has been used a lot more, so I can really just kind of brush it on, and it gives me a more um, blended look on the edges of the petals. And I just think it makes it look so much nicer in the end when all of your edges are inked. Um, it just makes it look more polished and pretty. So just go all the way around with them. 
So like I said, this is a little time consuming, super, super easy. There's nothing hard about it, but you're going to need a little bit of time. Um, you could punch your flowers while you're watching TV, and I love to do stuff like that while I'm in there watching Netflix. Okay, so once you have all of yours inked, and I have a cup ready already, a cup ready already, that sounds funny, and then I already have these done too, and I didn't ink these because they're not going to be seen, so don't worry about inking that layer. So to form the pretty shape that I have, I really keep it simple. I know some people are amazing with doing paper flowers and they have those fancy tools, but I just, I don't know, I like to just do it the easy way. So I just take each little petal and I just pinch it like that. Hopefully you can see that little cup shape, but I kind of do it all at once. So I'll take one petal in this hand and one petal in that hand, and I squeeze them at the same time, flip it, squeeze them in the same time, just like that. And then I just bend each petal inward. That's it. And then you can kind of just, you know, roll it like that if you really want to get fancy. So each one is going to be done that way, okay? So you're going to see how quickly I can do these. It does not take any time at all. Barbara, you fell asleep from the cold meds. <laughs> I cannot take that stuff. I took Benadryl one time. It was a couple years ago. And, oh, Chris was so... He was just like, go away. He said I was just, like, belligerent. Like, I don't drink at all. So, I guess it was just a little too much for my um, system. Yeah, I was a little delirious. He was like, lay down, go to sleep, and sleep this off. I was kind of stumbling through the house. It was pretty, it was pretty sad. So I can't do that anymore. The new Prima dies are so amazing. I love them. Um, I want to show some tricks and, um, well, not necessarily tricks, but tips, I guess, on using them. I found really easy ways for the intricate ones to get all the little pieces out. Um, I don't have one of those fancy little brushes. I wish I did. That kind of gets all the stuff out of the dies. But... I've come up with a few little techniques that really make it easy. Okay, so we're almost done. This is really quick and easy. You could use a stylus and a foam mat and like really shape these, but yeah, I just have never really done that. <laughs> she can punch yours for you. That's funny. <laughs> Ooh, Tiffy, that sounds really good. Chips and salsa. Speaking of snacking, where's mine at? Oh, this is my snack of choice. It is that Smart Food White Cheddar Popcorn. Yeah, I've been through like that whole bag in two days. It just sits here and I eat it. I love that stuff. I'm definitely an eater when I'm crafting. I have like food all around me, stashed everywhere, like every drawer. Wherever my paper's stored at, I have like junk food in there. Stamp storage, junk food in there, have it everywhere. Okay, three left. So like I said, it is a little bit time consuming, but it's not too bad, y'all. And honestly, I mean, this is just me being a perfectionist. You probably could get away with not even shaping these. I mean, it's just what you prefer. Okay, so once I have them all done, here is how I adhere them to my base. And I forgot to leave a couple plain ones for this, but that's okay. I'll pull three apart really quickly. Um, I just take this new 3D glass gel in this little tube. I mean, the, the gloss gel is not new, but the way it's packaged is, and I really like it. And I'm just going to dab a little bit on here. And then I'm going to take one of the paint brushes and just spread it out. And you're going to overlap your petals because you really want full coverage. You want a nice, even layer. Um, of the paper flowers so that nothing is showing through to the styrofoam. Okay, and then I just take them and push them on there. And it does take a little bit of time to dry. That's why I did all of them except a couple so that we weren't waiting and waiting for it to dry. And then I figured we could go on to the next step while that dried, these last ones. Okay, so I'm just going to push those on there just like that. And as it dries, right now they're kind of... Um, I don't know if you can see that. They're kind of sticking up. But as this gets tackier and firmer, you can really go in and push these all the way down. Like you can see the ones on this side are not moving at all. Okay. So just push them down for now. And that just took three more of them. 
and wait for it to dry. Okay, so that's our base layer, and I leave this part just plain styrofoam. That doesn't bother me at all. Okay, so for this part, I like to kind of sift through and see which pieces I think are the prettiest, because we're going to do two layers, like we're going to layer, um, we're going to stagger them on top of each other, and that's going to make one flower. So if there's one, like, um, I don't, this one isn't my favorite one, the pattern on there, so that's going to be a bottom one. See, I'm really picky, y'all. And then I'll take one of the designs that I like the most, and I will put that one on top of the other one. I'm using hot glue right now, but I'm going to show you an alternative to using hot glue and it's typically what I'd use but when I got home tonight from work I realized I did not have any stick pins but let me grab one really quickly if you grab those stick pins that have pearls already on them you are gonna save yourself so much time and effort just by using one of these bad boys and you're just gonna put two on top of each other poke it through Hopefully I don't stab myself here. Just like that. And then you can just stick it right down into the foam. And that is the way I usually do mine. But I was out of stick pins and I just had to use the hot glue. But that's the easiest way. And especially if you get the ones with the pearls already in the center, you're gonna save yourself loads of time. Okay, but since I don't have that, we are going to use hot glue tonight. When I'm just doing really lightweight things, as you know, I tend to gravitate towards the hot glue. I'm very impatient. I don't like waiting on things to dry. I heat set everything, paints. I just, I can't stand waiting for something to dry. So I go for hot glue. Okay, so I'm just gluing these two layers deep and staggering the petals so that they're not straight on top of each other. So that's what they're going to look like, pre-pearls. I don't put the pearls in until the end um, because I like to move things around and push down in the center of the flowers to make sure the glue is nice and adhered. Okay, one more. So yeah, just pick the prettiest um, patterns to be the top flower. Alright, and now hopefully we have enough of these. I did do a bunch ahead of time. I've got a whole little cup here. Hopefully that's enough. If not, we're going to be punching some more. Ah, hot glue string stuck. Okay, so to make the base of this, it's really, really easy. All you're going to do is take your cutting board and a scoreboard. I'm going to use this script paper. I really, really like this piece of paper in the collection. It's really pretty. Um, I love script. I'm just, I mean, I think we all do. I'm just a big fan of script paper and script stamps. So I'm going to take my cutting tool and I'm going to cut a two inch strip. If you make a bigger cupcake, just measure how big your base is. This one is two inches, so I'm just cutting a two inch strip lengthwise. Okay, and then you're going to need your scoreboard. Mine is really grungy looking, of course. Everything I have is like super grungy looking. Let me move some of this stuff out of the way really quickly. Okay, so we're going to line it up here and we are going to score at every quarter of an inch. If I can find my boat and folder, there we go. Okay, so every quarter of an inch, I'm just going to go in and score. And just hold your paper down and make sure you don't misalign any of these because you need these to be exactly the same and this takes one and a half these are about 11 inches and it takes one full strip like this and then like a half of another one so you'll have to cut two two inch strips and then you'll need one and a half of them to go all the way around yeah corsage pins that's what they're called I don't know what I call them did I call them paper clips? I have no idea. Have you all got any new favorite Prima products? I mean, it's like overload of the new releases at Cha. It is just so exciting. I mean, I'm sorry, but I love the fact that I feel like I don't need anything else besides Prima because, I mean, they've got it all. We've got 
they've got adhesives, they've got your paper cover, they've got your flowers, they've got your embellishments, they've got stamps, molds, I mean, what do you need? They've got it. It's just amazing to have a company that literally encompasses everything you need. So I'm pretty thrilled about that. I mean, you want to alter something? Okay, go look at the alterables, like, and buy one, and everything needs there. I just love it. Love it. Um, there's a couple items I don't think they've shown yet that are among my favorites, and I cannot wait for those to be shown. One in particular. Okay, so once we have it all scored, yes, everything. Tiffany, yeah, that's how I feel. The paper dimensions, no, they're not. Let's see. Gen uh... I should have done that. I just didn't think about it. These are two inches for your bottom base. They're two inches by 11 and a quarter. It's the A4 pad, so I just cut it lengthwise. So it's two inches, okay? And then I'm scoring it every quarter of an inch. See, I'm so, um, I just never really measure things a lot. I'm so, what's the word I'm looking for? Unexact? I don't think that's a word, but that's what I'm going to use. So I just kind of wing it but this one is two inches. All right, oh, sorry y'all, I'm just like talking and going without you. I'm just mountain valley folding these. Um, that's the term I've always been told. I'm just, let me start on this one and show you. I'm folding one of them forward, and then the next score line I'm folding back. So forward and back all the way through it, and you're gonna get this, or accordion fold, I think some people call it that. Oh, the big stamp set with the feather in it. I have that one over here. We're going to use that one tonight. Yep, yep. We're going to use that to make our butterfly. That new IOD stamps are amazing. I mean, there's some really big stamps in there. Um, I have to say, hands down, the molds are my favorite. Definitely. I just think, like, bang for your buck, the molds are the way to go. You can make a million molds out of them. And, I mean, that's just stretching your you know, embellishments to the max right there. I love the molds. Yep, just like making a rosette. That's exactly what we're doing. Yep. I should have thought to say that. I think I overcomplicate things sometimes. Okay. I think this is enough because I've already got one of them already um, folded over there. But I'll keep going just in case. Once I start getting um, towards the end, I kind of lose it. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and, I think that's enough. All right, you really only need one and a half, so I'm going to go ahead and cut on that score line and cut that piece off. And if we need it, we can add more. All right, so I've already got one of them done right here. And I didn't ink these edges or anything. I just left them as is. So all I'm going to do is take two of the sections. Oh, Steph is amazing. That woman is just like a ray of positivity and so super talented. Okay, I'm going to take these and I'm just going to glue two of these pieces together, okay? So this one's going to overlap this bottom flap, okay? So just like you're making a big rosette, I'm just going to glue those together. Um, I probably shouldn't use hot glue for this, but if I do it really quickly, I might be okay. I don't like to have lumps or anything. Yep, we're good. Okay. So I'm going to squeeze them together to make sure it's nice and flat. No lumps. Okay. So we've got one big piece now. So typically when you're making a rosette, you're just going to go like around like that. That's the same thing. But for this, we're not going to do that. We're going to take our cup here. Um, I didn't do anything to these cups. The pink is getting covered up, and then the bottom is white and the inside is white, and that's fine with me. So as long as this pink part got covered up, that's all that I really cared about. But um, I've made a card out of this before where I had a hinged top, so I did cover the inside of that one with paper. So all you're going to do is wrap this around your cup, and let me go ahead and adhere these two together. And then we'll just slide it down over there. I just wanted to make sure it was big enough. Um, let me cut this piece off. Okay. Alright, so just completely connect your little scored and folded piece here. Let the glue dry for a second. Okay, 
So we've got like a little circle here. And I'm just going to slide my cup down in there. Okay? So just like that. Now I use hot glue to adhere this. Um, you can use whatever you want. This one's actually a little too tall. Let me go back to the one that I pre-cut. That one's like two and, there we go. That one was like two and a quarter inch or something. Okay. So to adhere this, I use hot glue. I just, you guys, I love hot glue. What can I say? But if you want, you know, to use any adhesive, you could use a dry, a, a, a hot glue, a wet adhesive, anything you want. So all that I do is I just kind of go in and I'm just going to kind of lift a few little areas out and I'm going to put a little line of hot glue and just push it tight on there. So I'm just going around putting hot glue, paying attention to the top most of all because you really want that to be nice and firm. Okay, once I have the hot glue, I'm just going to go in and you want to keep your um, spacing even if that makes sense. Like I don't want to pull this really tight and let that hot glue dry and then have this end be really loose. So just try to keep it the same, your little folds the same distance all the way around. So next I'm going to go pull out another piece and I'm literally just sticking the hot glue down in there, especially at the top, and then just pushing that on there very easy and this is not going anywhere in fact um, I tried to pull one apart earlier to reuse the cup and I could not get it off like this is not going anywhere trust me okay the only downfall of using hot glue are the glue strings and they drive me insane okay let me get a glue stick really quickly so you guys can see this is easy. I mean, there's nothing complicated at all about this. You just gotta take a little bit of time. All right, one more spot to put hot glue. Hopefully y'all can see better like that. I'm literally just sticking my nozzle in there and just putting a nice, even layer around the top of hot glue. And even if you get like right here, I have some kind of seeping out, it's really no big deal because you're gonna cover that with your top. Okay, so that's it. That is the base of our cupcake. Like super simple. That's what it looks like from the top and the bottom. All the way around. Very, very easy. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and I think this is dry enough. I mean, this medium takes some time, but I really like it better because to go in with hot glue and all this would probably melt the styrofoam. Okay, I'm just going to put a couple of dots of hot glue to make sure these three that we just glued on stay down. <laughs> yes, me and my hot glue gun. Oh, who's making banana bread? That's literally my favorite, favorite dessert, if you could even call it that, of all time. My mother used to make me that. Oh, I love it. Okay, so you're going to go ahead and adhere your top from here. And it looks like... Um, not quite big enough. Well, that's because we don't have our extra flowers on there yet. So right now it's going to look a little small. So to adhere it, I'm going to use the hot glue again. And I'm just going to put a bead right around here. I love hot glue. You guys know it. I promise if I'm doing like a really nice project and it's leaving my house and it's heavy duty, I don't use hot glue. Okay, so just make sure that's on there really well. Let's see, Carrie says, yes, the new mini series. Very, very cool. Carrie is really good at coming up with good ideas, y'all. It's going to be awesome. Just a really quick way to get some education in there instead of showing a whole project like we can just show you how to use a certain item or multiple items and like really go in depth with it so it's gonna be really amazing I'm excited about it okay so we've got our top glued on here and this is what we're looking like so far kind of blah um, let me add some glue right there really quickly I don't like the way that edge is poking out there we go. Let me hold it really quickly. Okay. So now comes the fun part, adding our flowers. 
So this is where those corsage pins, thank you whoever told me the name of those, um, would really come in handy, y'all. You're going to save so much time if you have those. Um, I don't, so we're going to be gluing them on. So I have all my flowers here. And like I said, hopefully this is enough. We may have to punch some more. Um, but hopefully not. So we're just going to start at any point. It really doesn't matter. Sometimes I tend to start around the edges just so I know that they are um, lined up correctly. So I guess we'll start there. Okay, so we're just going to take one flower, kind of hold it up see if we like the spacing and how it looks overlapping the liner. This is our faux cupcake liner, so just make sure your petals kind of come down over that because you want to hide this seam right here, okay? So I'm just going to add a little dot of hot glue. The um, heavy gloss gel, this stuff, the 3D gloss gel, would be your best bet for this, but again, I'm just going to do this for time purposes and so it's not moving around. I usually use a paintbrush, the end of a paintbrush, just to kind of stick it on there and make sure it's not going anywhere. So there's our first little lonely flower. Let me hold it still really quickly if my camera will focus. Okay, we're gonna go all the way around. And as you go, just kind of, you know, don't put all of them like straight across. I just don't think that looks as natural. Um, so I just kind of stagger them a little bit. So I'm going to put this one up a little bit higher and just kind of interlock your petals. You're just going to want to kind of push them into each other. Um, you can even like push one down under the other one. Just kind of play around and move it around. And once you get all of them adhered, you can really move them all around. But see how that petal is coming down longer than the other one. That's what you want. You want it to look really natural and not like all lined up and symmetrical and perfect. It just looks better this way. Okay, so I'm going in all the way around and just adding my flowers. And once you get to this part, this is not that time consuming. It's just prepping your flowers, really. That takes the longest amount of time. But for like baby showers and weddings and birthdays, things like that, this is a really fun idea. I made Christmas ones one year and hinged the top, which took a little bit more work, and made cards out of them and they were super cute. Alright, so this is what we have so far and we've just got four of them on there. And you can see how pretty the design paper looks in there. It just looks really pretty. Okay, so I'll go ahead and start going upwards with it. This is where it really takes like some finagling. You're going to kind of like see how it fits in there best. Just put a little bit of hot glue. And then I'm just going to kind of push that first petal down in there under that one. And use my paintbrush to really push down on that hot glue. Okay. Just like that. I'm just going to keep going around. I think you guys get the gist of it now, so instead of talking, I'm going to try to focus on getting it done because this is going to take a little bit of time. Oh, Tiffy, are you feeling bad, sweetie? Let me see. Oh, feel better, and thank you so much for coming, especially when you don't feel good, babe. Get some rest. Yeah, I really like making paper flowers. Um, I used to make them a lot more than I do now because Prima does all the hard work for you. I mean, they've got such gorgeous flowers, like I can't really bring myself to use anything but those. But they are. They're fun, cute little embellishments. I covered a box one time completely in these, and it was pretty cool looking. All right, just be mindful of your glue strings if you're being lazy like me and using hot glue. So you can see it's coming together pretty quickly. If you guys have any questions so far, let me know. I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, nothing too hard about this. I mean, if you didn't ink the edges and didn't um, curl all your petals, you could do this really quickly. If I have time at the end, I'll show you the first cupcake stand I ever made. It's so big, though, it might not fit on camera. I mean, it's gigantic. It's a real cupcake stand, a big one. And I filled it up with cupcakes. I think we all have those projects we've made that are just special to us. We're usually so critical of ourselves, but that one is my favorite, probably of all time. 
Okay. I think we're going to have enough flowers. Knock on wood. More about the markers. I'm going to look up and read these ideas as you guys are speaking. I have all the markers and I've used them for so many different um, projects, but I don't use them, I think, how they're really intended to be used, which maybe is okay, you know. It's all about making the products work for you. But I love the markers and I'm not a colorer at all. Now with the watercolor stuff that Prima's just come out with, I'm definitely loving that. I, it's so forgiving. I love the watercolor pencils, the new um, confections. Ah, oh, so amazing. They also have a new group on Facebook. I think it's called the Coloring Society. Um, and it's all about posting your watercolor stuff. It's so pretty. The stuff people are making on there with the new um, watercolor coloring books from Prima which are amazing. I haven't got my hands on those yet, but they're amazing. All right, so we've got half of it done so far. It's already coming together. You can see how once you start filling it out, it really, um, you know, overlaps that liner and makes it look really pretty. And then when you add those pearls to the center, it's just going to bring it all together. I so should have left work a little early and gave myself time to go get some corsage pins. But I thought I had some at the house. And I probably do. The sad thing is my scrapbook room is so messy. I probably have them somewhere and I'll find them like right after the show. So who all got to go to Cha this year? Let's see here. The new texture brushes. Yes, those are super cool. Finnebear did some demos on those. I've got hot glue strings everywhere. Sorry, y'all. Give me a second. Those look absolutely amazing. Has anybody seen the... I don't know if they've shown them yet. I messaged Sharon. She said it was okay to share them, so I guess I can. Um, but the new wooden chandeliers. I don't know if you guys have seen those, but they... Oh, oh, oh. I am so in love. They have two um, different styles. One's, I think they're called Bohemian and then Traditional. I'll show you guys in a minute. They're so amazing. For people who love to alter things or do like home decor, they are awesome. I've already made one for my niece's bedroom. Um, she's staying with us now, so I've made one for her bedroom, and it's really pretty. We're going to make her a little canopy bed and stuff and go all out and have like a primified room. I've been doing a lot of home decor stuff lately with like the watercolor panels and everything. I love that Prima has branched out. It's not just like a scrapbooking, you know, company anymore. Ooh, yeah, thank you Carrie for sharing that link. It's a really cool group. It's just got started, but they're already sharing some really pretty um, watercolor pieces in there. And it's like beginners to people who are a little more advanced. Um, it's awesome. The other day I showed just a simple post of me coloring at night out of one of my coloring books. Um, so just share anything in there and be inspired by everybody else. Facebook groups are awesome. Okay, we are almost done, y'all, with adding these flowers. Okay. Phew! So we've got a little gap over here left. That's what we're going to work on now. I can't believe we actually had enough. I'm so proud. I'm going to go ahead and do two dots of glue and try to fit in two of them. I don't know if you guys can see these glue strings on camera, but they are literally like taking over the world right now. They are everywhere. But speaking of uh, tips and tricks, Tiffany, Mama Tiffy, she showed a tip a long time ago on how to get rid of glue strings, and it has just been a lifesaver. And I'll show it in just a second. The Lanties are so cool. Yes, those are awesome. I love those, especially the metal ones. The first ones I saw were the little uh, metal industrial looking ones. They almost look like the industrial lamps from the Junkyard Findings collection. Like come to life. That's what they reminded me of. They are so cool. And then like all the beautiful trendy ones and then the ones with the map on it that's i'm obsessed with maps all of a sudden 
the girl who's never traveled like anywhere except the southeast United States loves maps. Okay, a few more. So as you can see, like you're going to get some tight areas and you're going to have to really work them in there, but it's okay. We can make it work. Okay. And you know what I'm going to do to save time? Because I cannot believe it's actually taken this much time so far. I'm going to skip adding the pearls to the center of all of these until the very end. Um, because you guys can see what the pearls do. They literally just bring it to life. And we'll go ahead and work on our stand next. I swear, I always think, oh, I'm going to get done in time. I'm going to have extra time. Nope. Okay, that's our last one. Let me let it dry really quickly. Okay, once you are done, let me get these glue strings off. Okay, you can kind of go in and fluff them out, kind of give them more shape. Um, and then when you add the pearls to the center, that's really going to define every flower. So you guys, I mean, we did that in like 10 minutes. It's really quick and really easy. I'll add just a couple pearls really quickly just to show you um, how it brings it together. It really just makes it look like a flower. Let me add a couple in here really quickly. And I'm just using little blue pearls. Um, I've used perfect pearls. I guess that's what they're called. Um, liquid pearls, not perfect pearls. Um, liquid pearls in the past and they really looked amazing too. I'll add one more. The pearl, you gotta have the pearls in the center, otherwise it just doesn't look as pretty. Okay, so we've got a couple pearls there, so hopefully y'all can see just how that defines it. Okay. There it is. Okay, let me move these extra ones to the side and we're gonna work on our base. Now this is really easy to do. The base is super fun. Let me get all these glue strings off. We're swimming in them. Okay, now here's the base plain, just like this, which is just a little ceramic one, okay? We're going to cover the bottom with um, the silver microbeads, but I want to do that last because I'm going to be handling it. So the first thing I want to do is add a border around this. Even though it already has this pretty scalloped edge, I wanted to add more Prima paper. So I took this green strip of paper from the collection, and I cut a inch and a half, and then I just used one of my border dies. Um, this one right here, this is the one I used. And then on this one, I used a Martha Stewart one to do it, but I just kind of wanted to change it up. So we're just going to add that all the way around the edges of this little cupcake stand. Okay. So again, I'm going to be using hot glue for time purposes. So I'm just adding a little bit. And I want the green side to show, and I want to match my little scallops with the scallops that are on here. Okay. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to go all the way around my stand, just putting a very thin amount of hot glue. It doesn't take much. This will stick to the ceramic really easily, too. Okay, so that's what it's going to look like when we get done. And I didn't even ink these edges. I didn't ink it on the original one either, but you could. Um, but I just thought it was pretty as is. I tend to go crazy inking paper, so sometimes I like to just skip it. Okay, and I like how this has that script right there. I'm going to let that be the front part of the base. So I'm just going all the way around, very quick and easy. And I have a little bit excess paper. I'm going to go ahead and cut that off. And done. Okay, so that is what it looks like now got some extra detail to it. I'm going to grab another hot glue stick really quickly because I'm going through them like crazy tonight. For the original one, I just traced a circle and glued it to the top of this one. 
but I wanted to do something a little different so I used one of the Prima dies this time and I want to add it on there because I just think it looks really pretty okay so I use this die right here La Fleur doily and I've got my little tidbit still stuck in there but the item number is 584078 how pretty and intricate are these dies they're amazing okay so I'm going to use the gloss gel because or the let's use this one because it is just more convenient to get to I'm just going to use this one the 3d gloss gel because I don't want to try to add hot glue to all these little intricate parts so I'm just focusing on the center the edge of it I'm going to have kind of um, coming down off the sides so I'm just focusing on the center part and this is going to be covered with um, the cupcake here in the center so don't worry about it if it's seeping through just get a nice amount on there and then a little bit on the edge pieces too doesn't have to be perfect let me wipe that up really quickly too okay and then I'm just gonna set it on here trying to make sure it's nice and even okay then I'm gonna just kind of rub that excess gel medium just to kind of seal that doily down Yeah, that looks way, way, way cuter. I really like that. All right, I'm just going to push my hands around and just kind of drag that scalloped edge downward. So it's going to kind of look like that. It's going to be like double layered, and I just think that looks really cute. I like that. Okay, so that is it for covering the base with paper, and we'll add the microbeads at the end. Okay, so then you're just going to put your cupcake on top of your base, just like so. Let me figure out which part I want to be the front. Not that there's much difference. There was a little bit of script somewhere. Okay, there we go. That's gonna be my front right. Let's see, right here. Okay, so I'm gonna glue my cupcake here. Um, let's do hot glue again. It's quick. So I don't wanna go off the edges though, so I'm just adding it kind of to the inside part of the pink cup right there. Okay, and then I'm going to try to make sure it's lined up perfectly center before I set it down. Yep, and then if it needs to be moved a little bit, you got a little bit of time. There we go. Perfect. The die is amazing. Amazing. I love that die. Okay, so this is what we have so far, y'all. It's already super cute. So just to spice it up a little bit more, we're going to add some embellishments. I don't have another one of these chipboard butterflies. This was a, oh goodness, I don't even remember the brand, but it was a, just a chipboard butterfly I had in my stash. But we're going to substitute that out with um, that, new, that new stamp set that someone mentioned earlier. Let's bring it out. Okay, I hope this is the one they were talking about. It's one of the new clean stamp sets from IOD, and it looks like this. It is so pretty. All the new stamp sets are amazing. Super pretty. And the item number is 814663. So I'm going to use the butterfly. And it's a little bit larger, but we're going to bend it, and we're going to make it work. Okay, so let's see. I should probably use maybe some script paper. Yeah, I think that would look really pretty. I don't have an acrylic block on me right now, so I'm just going to wing it. Let's see, what color should we do? I did blue on the other one, so let me grab a chalk edger in blue. This is the Tilde Damask. I just love this one. I think this one was worn jeans, but I don't have that one on me. It's somewhere else. If this color is just way too bright, I'll use the pink one. It might be too bright for this um, color palette. If it is, no biggie. Till Damask was one of my favorites of all time. So I'm just inking that butterfly. You can see the detail there. It's beautiful. Oh, Carrie, a hummingbird would be beautiful. Front. Oh, excuse my accent, y'all. I do say some funny things. I pronounce a lot of things really weird. 
Okay, so this is still really sticky because it's brand new, so I'm trying not to get a bad impression. Hopefully that's okay. Yep, I think that'll work for me. It's a little darker than the other one, but you know what? Let's try the pink one, y'all. Sorry, I know we're like pressed for time, but I want to be happy with it. So I never clean my stamps really well, but yeah, that's just how it goes. All right, I'm going to add the pink. I think the pink will look better for this one. And this one is so saturated, it's a brand new one. That one was the old rose one, the same one we used to ink the edges. And I think I'll like this one better. And let me put that there. Boom. And lift it off. Okay, I like that one better. It's a little more subtle. And I will wipe that off in a minute. Okay, so we're just going to cut that out. You could use the, um, oh goodness, there's other stamp sets that have butterflies in them, but I really wanted to use that new one. So I am just going to cut it out. Typically I would use like fussy cutting scissors, but these are what I have on my table. So we're going to go with them. The new stamps are so pretty, you guys. They're just beautiful. And I like how the blue was on there a little bit still, so it kind of added like a purple look. So there's our butterfly, really detailed to be a stamp, okay? So we're gonna bend it in half, and we're just going to tuck it in somewhere to the side a little bit. I'm gonna kind of bend my wings with my finger just a little bit, just to get some good shape there. Okay, and then I'm going to find a spot where I can kind of tuck that in there and it will kind of fit well, if that makes sense, like a nice flat area. Let's see here. That'll work right there. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue and I am just going to set my butterfly in there, just like that. Okay, so we've got a butterfly. The chipboard one is definitely my preference. It's just a little more delicate looking, but if you don't have one, you can definitely use a stamped one. Okay, so that's just an extra option. I could have pulled this one off and put it on there, but I wanted to show that if you don't have that, just use what you have on hand. Okay, let's decorate the front of it. Now, let me grab my embellishments really quickly. I did a little bit of fussy cutting on one of the papers in the collection. It's really a tiny little like wildflower, so I'm going to use that. I'm going to use some of the wood icons from the Forever Green collection, and I'm going to use this little rose right here. For the original one, I used the one from Garden Fable, but that was my last one. But as you can see, let me move it right there, it's very similar to this one right here. It's not very different, okay? So I'm going to use that one instead. The item number for these wood icons is 576042. The wood icons are probably one of my favorite items ever from Prima. And I, you know what? We should have used this butterfly. That's it. Oh, I so wanted to use this butterfly now that I see it. But too late. Okay, we're going to use a few flowers. I'm going to use some from the Garden Fable collection. These are probably my favorite roses of all time. I love the shape of these. These and the, um, I guess they're called Danny flowers, are my favorites. These are the sprouts from Garden Fable and they're 580803. We're going to use a couple of those. And this blue color and then this one right here. And on this one we're going to peel one layer back off of the flower. This is my favorite one too, by the way. It's got that beautiful print on it. We're going to peel one layer back, but save that little layer because we will use it on something else. I never waste. I think that's it. I was going to use some of the um, butterfly collection ones, but that's good. Okay, so all we're going to do is add our little rose piece kind of 
right there in the center, just like this, kind of on the edge, just like that. Okay, and I'm going to use hot glue again for time purposes, because I think we're going to get done just in time. Okay, so I'm going to add that right there, just like that. Okay, we're going to add a couple of the roses. Actually, let me get my little metal plaque piece first. I keep so many embellishments in here. Um, when I take them out of the package, I just kind of plop them all in like little containers. I like the 24 one, but I think we're going to go with home since it is home decor. So I'm going to use one of the little plaques from the Junkyard Findings collection. This one says home. Okay, and we're going to put it right on top of that rose so that only the top part is showing. So we're going to glue it right there just like that. Okay. right in the center. So that way only a little bit of that rose is kind of peeking out on the wood icon. Okay, so just like that so far. Okay. Alright, now we're going to tuck our little flowers in. The one that we pulled apart, I'm just going to kind of tuck into the corner right here. And it just looked better being a little bit smaller than the blue one. That's why I peeled one layer off. Just kind of tucked in there easier. So it's just kind of tucked in like that. Okay. And then we're going to add the blue one back here. And I like to overlap my petals and stuff. I like everything to kind of be on top of the other one so that it looks... Um, it just looks more dimensional that way instead of just kind of spacing everything out. Okay, so that's what we've got so far. Now all we need to do is add our little wildflower, which I kind of have coming off the top of the plaque. Let me trim down the stem really quickly. Mm, trim it down a little bit more. And I'm just going to add a little dab of hot glue and just kind of have that coming out of that flower. Just like that. Okay. So that's what it looks like. Okay. Now all we got to do is add our pearls and a tassel and we are done. Okay. Let me grab a tassel. I used one of the pink ones on the other one. The tassels from the Ingvild Balm collection. These are some of my favorite items ever, ever, ever. I might use a blue one though here. Yep, let's use a blue one. Just for fun and to change it up just a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to find a spot where I can kind of pull a flower to the side and tuck in that tassel. Okay, so let me see where I want to place it at. I have to have it facing me in order to do it. So I'm turning it away from the camera really quickly. Okay, and then I'm going to just place it there and use the end of my paintbrush to push that string down in there. And then I'm going to pull the little petal back over it so that it doesn't show the string up in there. Kind of cover it up. There we go. Okay. So we've got our little tassel now. Let's get it straight first of all. Okay, so this is what we have so far. All I did on this one, and I'm going to skip it and go straight to the microbeads, is I draped some little pearls. I have a little pearl strand, and I just took it and draped some pearls coming down. Really easy to do, but more importantly, and since we're almost out of time, I do want to show how to do the base with the microbeads because it looks much better that way. It reminds me of like sprinkles. I think it just adds like a, a sprinkled look and looks more like a cupcake that way. Okay, so we're going to do that. So I'm going to grab the 3D gloss gel again. I'm going to grab my silver microbeads, which I use on everything. The item number is 962562. I love these so much. I've gone through about 50 of them. Um, I can't stop using them. And I'm going to grab just a little tray to pour into so that I don't lose them. 
Okay, and I'm gonna use a bigger brush this time. Okay, so I like to do this last because you actually have something, let me move this one really quickly, something substantial to kind of hold on to. You can hold on to that base and it gives you something to really grip. So I'm just gonna add some of the gloss gel. And I'm going to start spreading it out with my paintbrush. I'm going to go all the way up on the stem of this um, stand, but not the top, just up on the stem. And just spread it out. Looks really gunky now, but we'll get it all spread out nice and evenly. And turn it around. You could use. Um, liquid pearls. I tend to use those a lot when I'm using the microbeads. Um, like I'll use silver liquid pearls. That way if any of it seeps through, you're still, it still looks silver. You can't tell. Okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to make sure it's pretty even. You don't want any huge globs of the gel like I have right there. Then I'll show you guys up close. Okay, hopefully you can see that. I've got a few globs right there. Let's get those off. Okay. Alright, and then we're just going to pour the microbeads right on to our stand. Okay. Now I'm just going to pour it over the little tray. I'm going to start on the bottom. I just usually kind of hit it like that so they'll spread. Okay, turning it around as I go. Okay, and then I'm going to pour it on the stem. Sorry, it takes concentration to do this without spilling them everywhere, which I've been known to do, okay? So once they are on there, I let them be for a while before I try to perfect them. But this is what we've got. It just really looks like sprinkles to me. I really, really, really like the way that looks on the bottom. You could even sprinkle the tops of your cupcakes if you wanted to. So that is what it looks like on the bottom. And that is pretty much it, y'all. Does anybody have any questions or any comments on anything? I do want to change out this butterfly really quickly because it's bothering me that it's just bigger than the other one was. So while I'm waiting for comments and stuff, I'm going to change that out. But, I mean, you see, you could totally use a stamp. But once I saw that wood icon, I just really wanted to use it. Okay, so a lot of times I'll break these in half. Don't kill me, y'all, but I just like to dissect everything. If it doesn't break evenly, I'll just cut it with my Timmy scissors. Okay, then I'm just going to glue it back together. But I'm going to glue it at an angle so that it has dimension this time. So it's going to be like that, like it's in flight. Yes, I let them dry and then I go back and touch up because if I try to do it now, everything's just going to kind of move. They fall off. It just becomes a mess. So I've learned with the microbeads, let them dry and then touch it up. If you try to go in with a wet medium right now and um, fix any gaps, it's just going to make a gigantic mess, really. Trust me, I've had so many epic fails with those microbeads. It's ridiculous. Okay, let me glue this in here and we are done. Okay. So we didn't get to add all the little pearls to the center, but I think you guys see on the original one that definitely needs to be done just to add the extra 
um, cute factor, pretty factor. It just makes it look more elegant. Okay, I like that butterfly a lot better. That's a lot cuter and it fits in much, much better. Okay, so that is what we have, y'all. Does anybody have any questions? I'll put them side by side. I think I stuck pretty close to the original minus the uh, pearls. But those are our cupcakes and they are super cute. They make awesome home decor, birthday gifts. Okay, let me look on here really quick. That's very true. I love, love, love the Timmy scissors. I use mine for everything. And I mean, I have cut through like a million things and they are still sharp. So, yep. Carrie, you knew it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just a perfectionist and I, I just didn't like how big that one was. I probably should have grabbed a small. I mean, now that Prima doesn't have a ton of butterfly dies, there's like a million options. But, yeah. That one just matches better. It just looks cuter. Okay. Sorry if I changed it and you guys wanted the other one instead, but now you see two ways. Okay. Thank you guys so much for coming out. I appreciate it very, very much. Butterfly dissection. <laughs> that is funny. Okay. Everybody have a wonderful night. Thank you so much for coming out. Go check out all the Facebook groups and post your amazing projects because we all love to see them. Um, oh, wait, one second. Can I just totally do one thing, Carrie? Please don't kill me. But the new um, wooden chandeliers, which, oh, I've got three of them to show on Facebook. This is the traditional one, and it's shaped like this, and it's amazing. And what I'm really the most excited about is that little chandelier is a sample from me. That's the one that I did um, for the packaging. So I'm, like, super, super, super excited about it. And I'll show you really quickly in person. Well, not in person, but on here. I mean, these things are big. Can you see? Oh, Lord. I'm going to have to pan up because it is really, really big. I can't even, even with panning up, I can't get it to fit into the screen. These chandeliers, you guys have to, have to, have to get them. They are so incredibly amazing. I just had to show you all these before I posted on Facebook because I just think... This is one of the coolest things that Prima has ever come out with. For all the DIY people, like, oh, they are amazing, and the possibilities are endless. With uh, Sandra's Relics and Artifacts, like, oh, you could go to town. All those are the little um, chandelier pendants from her. So anyway, I had to show that, you guys, because I'm just so obsessed with the chandeliers right now. Have a lovely, lovely, lovely night, you guys. Can't wait till everybody gets their hands on all the Prima products and has fun with them. Yes, that is why they're selling the chandelier pendants. Yep, the pack is amazing. And the Lumis go amazing with the chandeliers, y'all. The Lumis are just like the perfect touch to them. Really, really cool. Okay, let me put the record off.